Hola from Barcelona guys, my name is Elena and I have moved to this beautiful city for the next couple of months. I know that many of you who want to visit the city don't have the luxury of strolling on the streets for weeks and months like I do. So I designed especially for you an itinerary with the most beautiful sites that you have to visit. I'm gonna take you to the most beautiful houses and constructions that Gaudi has built with stops for coffee, for lunch and maybe for dinner. Let's go! So our first stop is Casa Batlio. I hope I pronounced this correctly, which is behind me. And it's competing with two other houses by two different architects. But I think that Gaudi's creation is the most beautiful. We are not going to go inside because access to each house is around 30 euros. You have to pay 39 euros. That is a lot of money. If you want to visit each of his creations, it's like almost 150 euros. But if your budget allows it, I would definitely recommend going inside. And you can see that the style that it has been built, the modernist style, is a very soft, very rounded shapes and inspiration is taken from nature where there are no straight lines. The roof of the building looks like a dragon back. It has scales in it. Up close, the building is even more beautiful and the tiles that decorate the facade. Uh, the color scheme of these tiles reminds me of the impressionist painter Claude Monet with his water lilies. We came here for a quick coffee, but actually they serve food and in the evening it's also a bar. All in a lovely decor with a lot of bikes. It's a bike themed restaurant. It really has an authentic feel. Um, it doesn't feel overly touristic and all the people that I've seen here are locals. So it's really interesting to mingle among people who live here and just come here for a bite or some coffee. What I love about Barcelona is that they have free water fountains everywhere. You just have to carry a bottle or a thermos. Each fountain has their own secret. Sometimes you have to kind of pull something from here, but this one pushes from uh, here. Our second stop is Casa Mila or La Pedrera. La Pedrera translates as the stone quarry. As you can see from the design behind me, it resembles rough stone. And this is actually the last building of Gaudi's work that is still inhabited by people. So there are apartments and you are only allowed to visit a part of the house so you don't disturb the locals there. And we are gonna go inside and see it by ourselves. Only 28 euros, but still a very steep price. We got the tickets, we got the audio guide that tell us about the story of the building. When the Milas family commissioned this house from Antonio Gaudi, the neighbors were not happy. The house design was so unusual, so weird, that they actually started calling it names. And La Pedrera is an insult given by the neighbors, meaning that it looked like a stone quarry. Although this building is considered by many a very whimsical and strange creation, Gaudi was a really practical man. So he was saying that everything that he builds, he wants to play a purpose. Like in nature, there is nothing that doesn't really play a role. If you look at the sculptures on this rooftop, the bigger sculptures represent the four elements, which is fire, earth, water, and wind. They are actually air shafts. And the smaller sculptures, the warriors, are chimneys and if you look close enough to the warriors they resemble a very popular character the sculptures were the inspiration for the storm troopers in the star wars movies We just finished visiting La Pedrera and now we're going to a bodega because we are famished. It took us one hour, but I guess all the art made us super hungry. We are sitting right now in Cerveceria Catalana, which is a traditional Catalan place for tapas. The tapas are brought one by one, so you start eating and enjoying and drinking wine. The ones that we have right now are anchovies and then some potatoes, bravas, with alioli sauce. The last two dishes are here. This is foie gras with 
beef tenderloin. Mm. It is really good. To finish our meal, two classical Spanish desserts, crema catalana and churros con chocolate. Let's try them both. Oh, so hot. Really good. And also bitter from the chocolate. Look at the caramelized sugar and the filling. Five individual portion of tapas, two glasses of wine, and two dessert tapas are 39 and 20. And just remember that tipping is absolutely optional. When I started editing this video, I actually stumbled on another very cool place for lunch. This one is located just five minutes walking from La Sagrada Familia, and it's a Mexican restaurant. So if you are into this kind of cuisine, I wholeheartedly recommend the place. It has one of the most delicious tacos that I ate in the city of Barcelona. It's just that good. Obviously, they have nachos, quesadillas, micheladas, beers, and so much more. Honestly, after having such a filling lunch, my last desire is to go somewhere else. But hey, we still have more than half of the tour. We have just entered the neighborhood of Gracia, which is a very quiet residential neighborhood here. And a while ago, Gracia was actually considered another town, so they were not Barcelonians. And this is a sentiment that people from Gracia feel until today. They don't feel like they belong to Barcelona. If you're looking for any of those things, calm and quiet, then I think the best um, uh, place, the best neighborhood for you to leave to stay here in Barcelona is this one. We planned to buy our tickets at the counter, but when we came there, there was no counter at the Sagrada Familia, so we went into a cafe and purchased them online. The tickets are 26 euros each. This is Sagrada Familia, or the Temple of the Holy Family, Gaudi's masterpiece. Words fail to describe how it really looks, and I know that video will be able to give you some impression, but you really have to come here to experience it for yourself. Gaudi was a big fan of nature, he was a big fan of light, and all of this can be seen here where the cathedral, compared to other super old Gothic churches, which are so gloomy and dark, this one is just full of light. You don't feel like you're in a church, you feel like you're in a meadow, and the sun just dropped these beautiful shadows everywhere. Actually, this part of the church is called a forest. The cathedral was dedicated to the life of the Holy Family and Jesus Christ, and it has actually two facades. The first one from which we enter, this is the Nativity facade dedicated to the birth of Jesus Christ, and it's executed in this beautiful hues of blue and green. And the one that I have behind me, this is the uh, Passions of Christ facade. It has yellowish and orange and red tones because it's the scene of Jesus Christ's death. Gaudi dedicated 43 years of his life to build the cathedral until his sudden death. He was hit by a tram, he was not paying attention at traffic, which from what I read was very typical of Gaudi. He was so absorbed in his work. So one of his wishes was that he was buried in the cathedral. And if you go down to the crypt, you can see that there is the grave of Gaudi. So our next stop is Casa Vincenz, which is one of the first buildings that Gaudi built. But you are seeing it the last during this tour. We actually weren't planning to visit this house, Casa Vincenz, but seeing the facade and the beautiful tiles that this building is covered in, we couldn't resist and actually bought a ticket. The ticket is 17 euros. So the inspiration for this house was the nature and oriental culture. And you can not only see the nature and greenery in this beautiful garden, which was much bigger when he first built the house, but also in the tiles. So all the tiles covering the house are depicting floral motifs. And for that time, it was really weird because the tiles were some of the materials that were supposed to go inside of the house. And he just plastered the tiles all over the house on the exterior. For that time, that was pretty revolutionary. Mm -hmm. 
We are officially in Paraguay, our last destination for today. It's an awesome park and it's one of the Gaudi's creations, obviously attracting a lot of attention here in Barcelona. So initially it was thought of as a residential project. The most rich people from Barcelona were supposed to live here on the hill, but the large public didn't like the idea so much. They protested until the place was made public and accessible to the general public like a park. I am actually sitting on the longest bench in the world. This is another of Gaudi's creation, this intricate mosaic is actually never repeated on the land of the entire bench. Every time is a different design. The place offers amazing vistas of the city. Because now is January, the sunset comes pretty early. We'll have to admire it in a couple of minutes. If you liked the video, like and subscribe. Obviously comment what was your favorite part, what was your favorite destination. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.